Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bonnet Podcast and welcome to Top 5 Friday. It is FAQ week, uh, so we popped this out at the beginning of the week to basically see what you guys were most excited about having resolved from Games Workshop. Now, spoiler alert, the FAQ has landed, but we're still going to go through this Top 5 things and maybe, you never know, some of them have actually been answered. Number five is Gretchen. So um, basically this top five list is put together of all the comments that you shared with us. Mixed with a little bit of, um, I want to say common sense, but really it's just a case of Blood Bowl stuff that we've been talking about since Christmas, basically. The last FAQ came out in November. The most recent FAQ came out this week. We've been waiting for it. We're waiting for some answers and potentially some price adjustments so Gretchen ranks number five on this list but is really kind of indicative of something that I think they kind of set the expectation of uh, essentially a bit of a rebalancing okay last FAQ we saw Morg go up in price we saw Hackflem go up in price <laughs> which kind of set that expectation of, oh, wow, maybe maybe we're going to see some more price adjustments. Maybe we're going to see Gretchen. Maybe we're going to see um, Morg go up in price. So the number five thing on this list that everybody wanted was for Gretchen and potentially some other stars to have a bit of a rebalance, a bit of a price change. Gretchen is something like 260 and deserves to be maybe 160. Or we give her hands, one of the two, because at the moment it's a massive investment. Uh, she's just much, much, much worse than Wilhelm Cheney. She's got some uses, absolutely. There are definitely some things that she can do to help your team if you're a Sylvanian spotlight, but... Dude, Cheney's just so much better, and he's cheaper. So, number five on the list was a price change for Gretchen and some other star players. <sighs> we didn't get it. So, star players have stayed the same for this FAQ, which means that's at least another six months of no Gretchen. But, hey, what can you do? Number four was wildly inaccurate passes. So, when Blood Bowl 2016 turned into Blood Bowl 2020, or Blood Bowl Season 2, Second Edition? Season 2? Season 2. Even though it's really Season 7 or something. But anyway... It introduced this very cool, bear with me, very cool concept of throwing the ball and just Jay Cutlering it in a random direction, right? Just, uh, I was going to say Matt Stafford, but actually, dude won a Super Bowl. Just throwing the ball, but instead of it going that way, it just goes that way or that way. And it introduced this new rule of if your die roll after modification is one or less, they had to FAQ that bit, then essentially the ball gets kicked off from the thrower in a D8 direction, D6 squares. The problem is with the rule, it, it doesn't kind of interact with the fumble rule very much, very well at all. And because it's a, a modification, there are some... Um, there are some passing levels that in circumstances can't actually make a wildly inaccurate pass happen. It's an interesting rule, and I think we all agree that what should be is if you roll a one, it's a fumble. If it if it's less than one, the ball wildly inaccurate. That's all it needs to be. That's really easy from a teaching thing. But when it comes to Games Workshop rules, they get a little bit excited when it comes to modifiers, plus and minuses. We've seen some carnage in 40k and Age of Sigmar over the last few years. And this is one of those that kind of carried into Blood Bowl a little bit. Because when you look at the wildly inaccurate, when it happens, when it doesn't happen, it is a bit kind of confusing. And it doesn't, in my opinion, add a huge amount to the game. But if you want to have that, have a one be a fumble, less than one is a wildly inaccurate. And it kind of balances out and simplifies it. But... It wasn't adjusted, it wasn't addressed, and for now, the rule is still a little bit complicated. I think we've done a Theory Thursday on passing, so if you're still confused, at least I don't have to redo that video. Anyway, number four for you guys and for me, because I agree with you, wildly inaccurate pass. Number three, we're sticking with passing, we're sticking with throwing the ball, and we are going with Hail Mary Pass. So number three for the top five FAQ needs is to refix Hail Mary Pass. Hail Mary Pass, as it stands, when this player performs a pass action or throw bomb action, 
The target square can be anywhere on the pitch and the range ruler does not even need to be used. A Hail Mary pass is never accurate. Regardless of the result of the passing ability test, it will always be inaccurate at best, which means it d8 three times no matter what else happens. A passing ability test is made and can be re-rolled as normal in order to determine if a Hail Mary pass is wildly inaccurate or is fumbled. A Hail Mary pass cannot be interfered with. This skill may not be used in a blizzard. Now this bit here... Uh, it says it can be re-rolled to determine if a Hail Mary Pass is wildly inaccurate or fumbled. The biggest issue with Hail Mary Pass is how it used to work in the old edition was you just roll a dice on a one you fumble, otherwise it scatters D8 from your target square. Which was insanely good fun for Bombardiers, because you just chuck a Bombardier in your uh, end zone and just drop mortars across the pitch. It was wicked fun. Now, Bombardiers, still pretty awesome, the fact that they get, you know, a bit of uh, accurate and stuff still means that it's very really good fun but it was just kind of like a thing it was just a thing now hail mary pass got faq'd in november to say um do you suffer the penalties and you do so nowhere in here does it it says you don't use the range ruler the range ruler does not need to be used but they faq'd it to say do you suffer the penalties for a long bomb and then they said yes. So actually, this Hail Mary Pass skill, which is like, a, oh, okay, cool, I can hoon the ball down, I can throw my bomb as far as I want, it's always going to scatter, but actually it could be really good for me, now becomes a, whatever you do, it's minus three to your pass. And we've just talked about wildly inaccurate passing. Um, so now it's uh, whatever you do, for example, if you are throwing a bomb, whatever you do, it's going to be minus three to the die roll, which means on a uh, roll of a one, it's going to be a fumble. On a roll of a two or a three, it's going to be a wildly inaccurate pass and a four plus. So it takes it down from a one in six scatter to 50% of the time, it's going to go backwards or on you. And the rest of the 50% of the time, it's going to be inaccurate. Uh, and that's even assuming that you've got no tackle zones and no nothing like that. So it, it basically, November, Hail Mary Pass got nerfed and we were really hoping that it would get fixed but again spoiler alert the may faq has not touched hail mary pass so for now hail mary pass still basically unusable number two is iron hard skin we had like 15 mentions of this skill just in the last week alone now i'm going to put this as a placeholder and i've combined it with some of the other skills you guys were mentioning that could use a bit of a tweak but we'll start with iron hard skin and then we'll kind of extrapolate a little bit more so iron hard skin the claws skill cannot be used against this player when making an armor roll that's cool in the old edition that would have been really useful because claws mighty blow comboed Claw bombs, claw bomb spam was a thing, right? Glad it's not a thing anymore. That's good. However, this skill was probably introduced to be a defense against that, even though it's only a mutation, which means only the players that could take claw can get anti claw. Interesting decision. Okay, that's fine. But number two on this list is iron hard skin and skills that are essentially underutilized. How can they be flexed? How can they be changed? And how can they interact a little bit better? So Ironheart skill is a really great example of a skill that will be handy every now and again, but also is a skill that you can randomly roll that will do nothing for you. If you're a two-headed goblin taking a random mutation, sweet, he's got Ironheart skin, which means that claw doesn't work anyway against uh, armor. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It just doesn't matter. You just roll a random skill that cannot be used. So Iron Hard Skin got flagged up so many times because one, it can be rolled as a random skill when it really shouldn't be. If you are, if you've got armor eight or less, because Claw just doesn't work against you anyway. But also, we may have had the opportunity to rebalance some skills that don't get used a huge amount to make them a little bit more exciting. You know, what? how does defensive work to be a little bit better? Ironheart skin, maybe it does something different, gives you plus one armor value, I don't know. They could have done, and maybe at some point they will, flex those skills to have a little bit extra, to make a little bit more sense, to be a bit more tempting. There's a few skills in the game that you're probably never going to see. Ironhold skin is essentially one of those, unless somebody rolls a random, basically it's never going to get used. So number two, FAQ was make some skills really interesting and good options, and it didn't happen. 
And number one, by an absolute flipping landslide, was this chap here. This is Barrack Farblast, the most useless Dwarf Star player in existence. The guy's edge 4 plus, but has sure hands, which is cool, but he's got a cannon on his arm. And the reason he's got a cannon on his arm is because he uses it to throw the ball a long way. So, what skill does a guy that wants to throw the ball, that has a cannon, and it's a throwing skill, what skill is it going to be? Is it going to be Cannoneer? No, they gave him strong arm, which is useful for throwing players which this guy cannot do. He can be taken on a team that has halflings, I guess. So, But no, he doesn't have to throw a teammate. So this one dropped because this guy in the old edition of 2016 had strong arm. Because back in those days, strong arm gave you plus one to pass long and long bomb. It was a really useful skill. That skill is now cannoneer. This guy, a copy and paste, and <laughs> it was a copy paste error for Barrack Farblast. And he landed in this edition with strong arm, which was a skill that was entirely useless. So for six months when this guy was released up until now, because spoiler alert, they have finally fixed it. He now has cannoneer instead of strong arm, which means he's got, I think he's got passing three plus. And he's got Hail Mary pass. It was hilarious. Great model. Rubbish agility. And had two passing skills that were just of no use. One of them, which was strong arm, was literally no use. And the other one was Hail Mary Pass, which the fact that it featured on this top five list kind of indicates it's basically of no use. But at least he's now fixed in the regard that he has Cannoneer. Whether he's a good choice or not is still debatable. There's some cool stuff you can do, but it's a great model. And if you want to use this model, use him as scroll. Scroll throws things, doesn't get sent off is just really good fun but the great thing is that the number one thing on this list that needed sorting in the faq which was this dude having strong arm instead of cannoneer did get fixed so i can honestly say that they got that right we've now got barrack farblast his price hasn't changed his agility hasn't changed his usefulness slightly has changed now his passing is actually quite decent if he can pick up the ball with a 75 percent chance best case scenario so while they haven't made him great at least he makes sense and you know what i think that's fair and when it comes to frequently asked questions which is what it is it's designer's commentary it's a designer's commentary errata and faq all in one go i imagine that the most frequently requested thing was please fix the skill that this guy has maybe we should have said please fix his agility as well because it's useful and it's a cool model anyway just use him as scroll but that is it for the top five faqs we are going to be talking about FAQ wish list on the podcast on Saturday. So those of you that put more great comments in um, for this list and also on the video for the FAQ announcement, we've got all your comments. I will be talking through what else they can do. And also we're going to be talking through the FAQ and whether or not we want it to become a rebalancing document because they have done it. They haven't done it. There's some good things about it and there's some bad things about it. So the FAQ is a really interesting point in Blood Bowl. And so far, last time was a really progressive state. Okay, they killed Hail Mary Pass, but they showed willingness to flex the balance, to make stuff usable or to make it less unusable. Not quite so this time. It's interesting. Anyway, let me thought. Let me know your thoughts on the FAQ situation, and uh, the fact that at least the top one in our top five got fixed is pretty good news. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy strong arming. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.